New models of Jaegers rise up to fight the Kaiju threat. Here's your look at the new Diamond Select Pacific Rim Uprising November Ajax. In response to an exponential rise in criminal activity involving illegal Jaeger tech in the years following the Kaiju War, it became necessary to utilize Jaegers in peacekeeping capacities. In the aftermath zones of Santa Monica, November Ajax is a 250-foot juggernaut of justice, keeping a vigilant watch over the California coastal region and towering over what's left of the glamorous world of old. We're going to go ahead and measure off November Ajax, but I'm actually going to go right past its head. Instead, I'm going to favor the little points on the sides of its shoulders, those little extra struts, as its point of its highest measurement, its highest height, if you will. So from the bottom to the very top right there, you're looking at 7.8 inches in height, which works out, go ahead and switch that to centimeters, as 20 centimeters exactly. Sadly, November doesn't get much in the way of accessories. In fact, the only accessories it comes included with is a pair of closed fists. Ironically enough, the closed fists are actually the extra fists that you have to put into its hand. Usually for relaxed palms, it's the other way around. At least I've noticed over the years of doing the reviewing here, I've always noticed that closed fists usually are the defaults when you get the figure out of packaging. Here, it's actually the other way around. Um, currently in the sockets of the forearms, you can see that it does have a pair of relaxed hands. Unfortunately though, this is the only accessories that the figure comes included with. To go ahead and just take the hand out, very easily just pop that out in, of the socket. Find the, of course, the appropriate replaceable hand to that and just pop that back into place. And you got November Ajax now with the opposing opposite hands to the ones that it initially started with. There's the relaxed hands once again. Kind of wish it could have come with some other accessories. Some of the figures in the cases here of the Jaegers, maybe the ones that aren't specifically carrying toting weapons in the movie. At the very least, maybe Diamond Select could carry like the little display stands. Unique display stands that would have come, for example, with little city buildings, skyscrapers, and little towering, you know, brick and mortar buildings in which you could actually have the characters walking through. Just a thought is for, you know, of course, there are there are some figures out there that just don't have accessories. I think in the movie, actually, it has like a, a bullhorn for crowd control, but that's not really something that you're going to be seeing necessarily on the figure. Um, again, like I really would have liked a display stand, something that has some extra buildings, or maybe one day they could release an accessory pack that has all the stuff I just mentioned, like a little display base with like little sky, sky gray. Okay, we've talked enough about that. So let's have a look at the figure, even though, again, no, unfortunately, no accessories to be had here. Like in the look of November Ajax here, like a sleek version of some of the Jaegers. We've gotten bulky ones. We've gotten stout and slightly larger uh, Jaegers. This is kind of more of a sleeker variety. Uh, one thing I really do like as one of my personal favorite aspects of the figure is the very sloped nature of its head. It looks very alien-like. Not quite reminiscent of like a Xenomorph, for example, but I kind of like the slicked back, smooth, pulled back version profile of his head. Of course, he's got some great coloring there as well. It, from camera standpoint, as the light shines down on it, it kind of as actually resonates more like a blue. In person, though, it actually comes across a little bit more like a purple. Not a stark purple, but if you were to take like a blue and kind of add a little bit tints of purple in there, it's almost more like a purple-based blue than it is anything else. It's got some great, these little great intricate little details in there. Um, it does have a ball joint in the upper torso of its, well, of its chest area. Um, one thing, though, is as you move the figure, 
it's very apparent though as you move the figure you start developing a little bit of gaps. This can work well for a character like a robot, a Jaeger, but it certainly would have looked a little bit more awkward if this was a human character where all of a sudden now you've got this big noticeable gap in there. But I think it actually works well. It gives you first of all much needed opposability that these figures really do need. You can't simply just make them stacks and figures in which that you can't really do any moving or articulation with. The fact that it does have the articulation at the sacrifice some could say that that gap being in there, the gap actually really doesn't bother me because again it's a robot. Going back to some of the color choices that they went with, of course, carrying their way from the movie that itself, these characters are obviously based from the movie. It's got some great little light areas here. We've got this light turquoise color shining its way through out of the armaments that the mechanized suit possesses here. It's got some nice kind of gunmetal gray there down below and almost like little piston struts. Uh, these little cylinders, of course, that would probably retract back and forth as the creature, as the robot was moving through the city. Of course, none of that gets really translated here in the figure, but at the very least, you get the sculpting in which it could have worked, theoretically. On the undersides of its feet, I can't help but notice it has no peg holes. No peg holes on this particular figure, which is a bit of a shame because really, if you could make use of a display stand, certainly in which I would like to make use of a display stand, I would probably have the creatures. I keep wanting to say creatures. I would have the robots more so in a walking stance. Sometimes getting them just in a museum stance, which is basically just like, just like that. It's just literally just... It's just like that. That's a museum pose. I guess you could do a little bit more to like the arms and stuff like that. But I would like to get a little bit more creative when it comes to displaying these. Utilizing, of course, things that I've talked about already, probably ad nausea, I apologize for that. Making use of little small cities would be a great way to kind of showcase many of the Jaggers that Diamond Select have released up to this point. And, of course, I'm sure they're probably going to continue to do so. It's interesting, though, that of all the Jaggers that we've been getting, we haven't really gotten any Kaijus to speak of, very little Kaijus to speak of from Diamond Select. So hopefully, hopefully we're going to get start, start seeing some of those through the pipeline, through the channel. We'll hopefully start seeing some of those. But again, I really like the intricate small panels making up the lower mid, mid torso area. You've got, again, some of those little lights projecting with their way through. You've got some lights up at the top there as well. Again, I really like the look of this particular Jaeger. Big shoulder pads. I don't dare say it, rem it reminds me of like a samurai. I guess samurai is probably not the best way to describe it. But I think being that it's got such large shoulders and kind of like a, a triangular, inverted triangular torso, kind of looks like to me like a robotic samurai. Um, it's paint is really where it excels the most. This figure could easily have been a different color in the movie, like a red, for example. But the blue and the gray works very well with this type of form, this type of design. It also is interesting enough that on the sides, it looks like it should have little holsters. I find that somewhat ironic. Not ironic, the fact that he doesn't come with necessarily accessories, but I find it more ironic that he's got sculpting on the sides of its leg, almost as if it could house holstered, holstered pistols. Somewhat funny, I kind of just chuckle to myself when I see that. Uh, okay, so let's talk about this character's, this figure's articulation. He actually has a fair bit. I know I'm referring to it as a he. The head rotates back and forth, despite for the fact that it is a slightly smaller head. It does actually sit itself on a ball joint, and you can rotate the head all the way around, or somewhat all the way around. Of course, it's going to start getting little stopping points right there where it's telling you, hey, listen, you can't go any further. I don't want to necessarily, don't want to break that by accident. Uh, the torso is on a ball joint, and again, you could rotate that all the way around. That gappage that we were talking about before sort of lends itself to the fact that you can rotate the torso as much as you can back and forth up and down, and slightly angled back and forth as well. Let's look at the shoulders. The shoulders rotate all the way around. These are on independent ball joints, as you can see right there. I thought at one point, looking when I first grabbed the figure and opened them up out of packaging, that this part was attached to the, the shoulder pad. The shoulder pad, I should say, was attached to that hinge joint right there. It's actually not the case. It's only ball jointed right up at the top. Can you see it? It's right in there. It's right it's right in there. It's right in there. So the arms, like I said, rotate all the way around. 
you can hinge the arm outward. You can not quite rotate the arm. You can't do that up at the top there, nor can you do it down below. That's kind of where its limitations uh, sit for the figure. I guess you can rotate the arms this way, but you're really only rotating this part right in here as your rotating point. Here doesn't rotate, the arms don't rotate, but you do have a hinge in the elbow and uh, the hands rotate all the way around, hinging back and forth. Uh, when we get to the legs, legs split. The legs go slightly forward, again, to the content, unfortunately, of the fact that that part right there rubs up against the lower half, kind of like the waist area, and delivers a bit of a stopping point there, once again, where the leg can't really go further past that, unless, again, you just kind of force it through. Um, the legs, like I said, go out, bend at the knee, single bend at the knee. Uh, then it also has ball joints right, let me just show you right there, there's a hinge, actually not quite a ball joint, but a hinge joint which rotates the feet back and forth. This little extra piece right here luckily stays out of the way and it has its own independent hinge. So when you are rotating the feet up, for example, this moves up along with it, gives you a little bit extra clearance where you wouldn't normally have clearance before. And lastly, he doesn't have, it doesn't have any posability in the feet. That's as much as you're going to get. Thinking to myself, going through the files in the back of my mind of all the kaijus and uh, Jaegers that I've looked at on this channel, I know, again, it's unfortunate that Diamond Select hasn't really released a whole ton of kaijus. It's really hard to even pinpoint one kaiju that they've released. I certainly have. Um, in, this, in the scope of Jaegers, that seems to be their bread and butter. They're doing a lot more Jaegers than they're doing anything else. I don't know if it's just due to licensing. That's unfortunately maybe what they were able to take to do. Maybe there's another company that's handling more the Jaggers, more the Kaijus than the Jaggers. So rewinding that of the Jag of the Jaggers that we've looked at on this channel, this is probably one of my favorites. I think I'm a sucker when it comes to blue and gray anyways, collectively put those together and then kind of get them this really neat slender profile in the middle and very sharp, kind of stark shoulders out. He's got a really great shape to him. Slightly more in, I guess, than some of the other Jaegers that we've looked at on this channel, but there's a certain charm to this one that makes him stand out amongst the crowd. Rooted in the back of my mind is a virtual checklist of what makes a perfect Jaeger design. You can see how productive my mind gets at times. Anyways, looking at that checklist, and let's go through that together. One of my tops, what makes a good Jaeger, is its colors. You'll probably notice over this series of reviews that I've looked at in the past for previous Jaegers that I seem to move towards more blues, gunmetal grays, blacks, and all the darker colors than I favor the reds, the even the greens, the beiges. Those kind of colors suit fine for most collectors, but I kind of dig the more blue-based colors of Jaegers, so right off the bat, Ajax gets points for that. I like the sleek design of this one. It kind of looks a little bit more alien than some of the other Jaegers that we've looked at before. In fact, actually, even in final looks, I'm looking at it right now, and I'm thinking I've seen this design before somewhere else feeling like a younger version of me would have been flipping through a Nintendo Power magazine and saw an advertisement for a new upcoming video game that has somebody inside an alien mechanized suit. Doesn't it look like that? Its triangular upper torso lends itself to think that it's a much more sleeker, more slim and trim, fast-moving Jaeger. And yet its lower half still has the bulkiness that you would expect to find with some of the more conventional Jaegers. It's got a combination of great two designs kind of put together. Its top half doesn't quite mirror its lower half, but maybe that's one of the things I like so much about it. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any accessories, which we talked about sadly in this review. A lone tier, perhaps, came out when discussing for the fact that despite for all the times that Nick, that Diamond Select have released Jaegers in the past. Unfortunately, we still can't get display stands. Why can't we get display stands that have little cityscapes, skyscrapers, and other buildings? Still, maybe this is, might be something that we're going to get down the road. And by the way, speaking of down the road, I hope down the road we will also start seeing some more kaijus popping up. Again, I don't know what the licensing is and why Diamond Select unfortunately hasn't released one so far. I don't think they've released one so far. So we just have to sit idly by. As good as these figures are, it really makes some sense to want to pit them against something. 
And I know for Pacific Rim Uprising, there's probably not as many kaijus to pull from, but there's still some. Let's hope maybe we can see some for future releases. Some good news, though, speaking of releases, this guy's currently released right now. This It is released right now. If you guys are interested in picking up the November Ajax, along with Valor Omega and Kaiju Drone, which so happen to be the other two figures from this wave, some good news is comic book stores have them stocked right now. So you can pick them up and grab them and put them on display, probably in a little bit more creative of a way that I've got it right now. But again, display stands could have come in a little bit handy as well. Today, like I said, we were having a look at the new Diamond Select Pacific Rim Uprising. This was November Ajax. Possibly could be one of my top five, even my top three favorite designs for the Jaegers that we've gotten from actually both Pacific Rims. The first Pacific Rim and the new one, Pacific Rim Uprising. You guys dig these reviews you guys like pacific rim or pacific rim uprising I want to go back and have a look at some of the previous ones that i've done for diamond select or some of the other companies as well there's a whole playlist just for pacific rim if you could believe that i know i probably have said pacific rim a whole lot in the last few minutes of final looks here but it, there should be a playlist if you guys want to check it out and see all the stuff i've done up to this point i frequently say this at the end of this review and usually i say it because it's not necessarily because i just continue want to bombard you guys with the idea that i have playlists but often at times people will say can you review a figure? And the funny enough truth is, most of the times I already have reviewed the figure, and maybe just with the series of all the other video uploads that I do on such a regular basis, those videos ultimately get lost. They're still there, you just have to search a little bit further. So the best way that I can organize everything and put them in a nicer, more easy to handle package is for you guys to check out the playlist. And that's all the stuff that I've done up to this point. And all future Pacific Rim reviews, for example, will also make, also make their way over to those playlists, just FYI. More videos, guys, will be coming your way. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.